this was going to be destroyed. I mean, does anyone think differently? You destroy one thing, invite the same people, and the same outcome is not going to happen? Anyone disagree with that? And who's the same people? It just assumes that everybody did everything. Well, if you invite the people that were there, I mean, they were supposed to move. So it was supposed to be the same people. Now, also, the thing is, the security about all of this. How do you feel the international, just residents, anyone that's walking past the school or entering the school? Where does the security lie in this? When you see graffiti all over the walls, it looks like we have no control over our own school. How are international parents supposed to look at this school and take this seriously, inviting their students to America to come and learn here when you can't even control the gallery space? And this is on a holiday. So, I mean, they didn't even have any say in this. At 2.30 p.m. Tuesday, international students have already taken flights. How many students in Parsons are not New York residents? We had almost no voice in that meeting. And this is another inopportune situation because it's at 12 o'clock on a Monday. Majority of my friends have classes. Why don't you do this at a more opportune time, like 6 o'clock? Evening classes are a little less filled, more people can come, then you can also have administrators, teachers, other people from financial aid, because I went to financial aid on Wednesday, expressed my concern with Leslie King, he also um, expressed it with his director and pushed on the message, helped me get in contact with David, and he was very helpful in all situations. But there is a lack of just general thought about this gathering. What happens to the students? What happens to the employees? I work here. What are you going to do? You just took away my job. How am I getting home? How am I making my money for the holidays? I mean, it's just taken from us. In the media, 2.30 p.m. And I didn't even know I walked into this gallery at Wednesday coming to work to take down the exhibition. Not, I was supposed to sit in the gallery as a tenant and invite everyone into the gallery. Instead, I am taking everything out of the gallery. What does that say to the curators of this gallery? What does that put focus, like, the mindset of, we don't care about your exhibition. We're going to get rid of your six months of planning and give it to the students that already trashed one thing. What is going to happen to the next one? Sir, yes. Yeah, you don't seem to think that what they did was artistic. Um, do you see, I don't know, that's what I was going to ask you. What, what, can you describe, you can use words like trashing, um, I've heard things like destruction, defacement, and I know in art history, I'm not, I mean, I'm not an art history expert, but a lot of the things that were called trash or defacement, one, I, I'd like you to, to describe it. Uh, one time, later, uh, uh, later were described as, as, you know, legitimate art. Um, what is this, this trash and, and this destruction? Those are strong words. And it also, this also reminds me of uh, Fox News' depiction of Zuccotti Park. Um, trashing, uh, hygiene, uh, things like that. And I'm just wondering if, if it gets too close to home, it's not the occupation isn't in Zuccotti Park, does that all make it not all right? Well, what was the intention of it wasn't based in art, it was based in sort of destruction and throwing a wrench in the system. Well, shouldn't art be political? Can I just say one thing? It was intentionally supportive, I think, is what you're saying. It says, we demand nothing, we demand everything. What does that say? They were drunk. <laughs> oh, we, we were drunk, so you can drunkenly write on our walls, and <clears throat> that's okay for you to write fuck NYPD on the floor. When? When does it make sense to say, I need Bob Carey's good leg? What? Yeah. Where does yeah. that make sense? Where? What are those demands? How we need I RPGs? Think the, I think the question where, is, where is I that think, artistic? Where is RPGs more, artistic? I think a more challenging question is, is where is the statement? It's easy to point out the self-evident so kinds of things, OK? That's easy. This is a progressive school. This is about critical thinking. Where in this graffiti, this destruction, is there something that is saying something? 
I mean, do you see... No, no, no. no wait, I'm asking you that. Me, personally, I see the destruction as just pointless. The majority of students have no clue why we are even occupying 95th Avenue. I mean, if we actually got a message across, maybe it would, there would be a point to this. But when you have a huge pile of chairs that was bought new for a student center, for the students, it was a wretched building that we completely destroyed and we were kicked out of almost. And we broke the escalators. We broke no cops, no videos, no photos. <laughs> Fuck the police, whatever. Okay. Look at the pictures. It was all Kill that. the pigs. It was I all that. Comment. Let's give um, an opportunity for some others to show up. The word occupation has become taboo now. I spent the entire month of October scared of leaving my apartment because as an international student I couldn't go to school because of the occupation. I couldn't walk outside without, you know, fearing my visa, fearing my karma, my creativity, everything. So I stayed at home, worked on my finals, my midterms which I still haven't turned in, because everything keeps changing. My, the way that I write keeps changing. The way that I realize and look at the world keeps changing. So I, you know, what happens <coughs> in the occupation here at New School, you know, it happened. It's not worth any you know, of the negative aspects of it. Um, you know, when I went there to visit, I was even scared to go up and visit. But when I did, there were people drinking and hanging out, whatever hanging on the walls and you know that was cool to see people do that but then when they you know took it to the next level of vandalism that was unacceptable. I personally I if I had to occupy a space as in take up space physically uh, for my breath and for my eyes I would like to use a space to print out my homework all my essays all my finals and my midterms and work on it. I would like to print out my work, put it on the walls, and write on that instead. I would rather work on my homework and turn everything in now that we only have three weeks left to get everything set. So I guess that's just uh, that's what I have to say. Thank you. I'm back here. Writing the wall versus not writing the wall, destroying the space. 
the fact that this space is more public, you can have those dialogues and it's more open to the student body which felt marginalized. Oh, question for you. I, I, I do have a question for you. I do respect what you're saying, but I do work here. So yeah. I think that it's important to discuss things in the abstract, but I would specifically like to know who in this room actually participated in graffitiing on the walls of a place where I work, where my coworkers had to paint it back to perfect so this conversation could happen in a peaceful place. Mm -hmm. So honestly, and instead of discussing this in the abstract, I'd like a literal answer as to who did it and why, before we can move and have a discussion about the theoretical elements of the situation. Mm -hmm. So why is important to mm -hmm. the one who wrote yeah. the wall? That doesn't mean anything. Because I'm going to you can have a literal conversation and not one that's like taking a, like five steps back and talking about the abstract and like the politics of group being right. Like I want to have a literal conversation. I think it does matter because those people weren't acting as individuals. They were saying that that their movements were aligned with a larger movement, which I remind myself with from the very beginning. And I can't agree with this. Um, I'll say that I think that right now it's still important to just share some things, but I would like to uh, shortly direct the conversation to how we will move forward. And so a question on the table is, are we gonna use this space? Because that's not decided. That has not been, we, it, it was originally, but the contract, if you will, was broken, the space was destroyed. So right now, we can't say that we are now gonna use Talent Gallery until December 21st. That's part of today's conversation. Absolutely, and it's so important that all of you are here. But there's a couple, there's a young woman right here. But maybe if folks want to talk, maybe just come and we'll just form a stack of people here and one person can talk yeah, to the other rather than just kind of trying to point hand at the other. I had a question actually for the next person. Let's go form a stack. What is your purpose of using the mic? Because so I want to know. What's your purpose of using the mic? If he was there, that's why. I, mean, I think their specific purpose has always just been that the new school is a very obvious example of high tuition and not being student loan debt, and that's really what the students a lot of Wall Street should be aligning themselves with, because that's, that's their connection to Baltimore College. I think Bobby was next to be We are ahead of the Um, Yeah, well, every Thursday there were all city meetings that this wasn't, you know, become. The, um, this occupation wasn't out of the all city meeting, but we did talk about it. Um, so this, it was never a new school occupation. There were many different people from many different schools. I mean, if you want to have a literal conversation, I know a lot of the students there know who was doing a lot of the graffiti. Um, and many of us had a problem with it. There were a lot of us there who were with a lot of you who did not like people who were doing graffiti on the walls. They were a minority. I'd say half an hour until we got to the building, people began doing putting graffiti on the wall. And a lot of us, it caught us off, it caught us, we were taken aback, because that's not what we were there for. Um, you know, and it's unfortunate that you know the actions of a few individuals can have such damage. But there were many of us who were you know, up against these people who were defacing the property. Where were all of you when we were there day to day when people were graffitiing the walls? I got in arguments many different nights with people I saw doing things. Why do I see many new faces who now have problems? Let's be honest about whether we're criticizing the overall movement or whether we're, or, or whether we're legitimately criticizing the, the graffiti. You know, because if you have a problem legitimately with, with I'll have good language. With mean people putting mean things on the walls, you should have come there. And I mean, yeah, I understand having mean people greet you and make you want to turn away, but we're in New York. Mean people are around here. I, I, I do not accept the, oh my god, I didn't come there because there were so many mean people greeting me there. No, I, there are mean people there all the time. You go in and you see what your school is doing. This, this was an occupation for all of us students. You know, for how many days that was there. It, it was like, it was perfect. We had teach-ins. We, we were having such, oh my god, perfect discussions. And unfortunately, the behavior of certain individuals made it, uh, had, it, it had to be closed down. But 
we really just talking about what we're going to do moving forward. It's I understand a lot of the criticism, but I don't I don't get it. Like none of the criticism is what we're going to do to to make a better space. A lot of it is just random criticism. I really don't get where they're coming from. Was there um, like any movement by the occupiers to clean up their the graffiti? There was, there was, but because we were. I see head shaking. There was. There were people who were painting over it. They were painting over it. Well, I mean like in the 95th Avenue space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yes. Yes, there, there definitely was. There, yeah. I mean, again, these, this was a minority of the people there. This was not what, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say we are. I was just one who was there. This was not what it was all what it was about. This Why was, didn't I mean, it be stopped if they were Why didn't the majority do it? Why didn't the majority? Because when someone has spray paint, they're going to spray paint, and we can all try to stop you, but, you know, I mean, certain people are going to do what they want to do, and unfortunately, that's, a, so a, that, that's what happens so when you have space like so that. So in a realistic sense, how can we continue to have the kinds of dialogues, and how can we continue to have the kinds of positive things happen in this space? Without, without just assuming that this is going to happen every day and that my coworkers are going to have to keep this left to white every single day. What, well, what? we could have, I know, I'm not going to, I don't even know her name, but I know someone who's doing graffiti. We could have found these people and they could have painted themselves. You want to graffiti a wall, you're going to repaint the whole thing. So why can't they? So I was thinking, I don't own the, 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 the building. Right. And then I mean, we shut down meetings. Why don't we go so, ahead and yeah. um, bring in uh, you know what? I just, I just want to, I just want to remind everybody that the trade-off and um, and offering the space was to avoid police presence, and I think we were really successful in doing that. You know, but unfortunately, you know, some some folks uh, feel violated. You know, with, with the graffiti, the trade-off was <coughs> to avoid violence, to avoid you know the police presence, and I was really I was really happy about that. Uh, the, the space on 95th Avenue, I spent maybe four days out there. Uh, there was nothing perfect about it to me. Uh, you know, there was, you know, this, I've, I've been here since 2008. This isn't the first occupation. And uh, what, what it seemed like is they didn't learn from the first occupation, of, which was to, you know, really communicate with the students at the school that you're going to be occupying so that maybe you can get more support around what you're doing. Uh, you know, again, there was also some, you know, you know, attitudes, you know, towards people coming in, you know, as Bobby spoke to earlier, and it, 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 it felt sort of like a, like a psychological pepper spray, you know, to walk in and, and, and have somebody, you know, just like, <laughs> ignore you in your own space. Uh, but you know, for that, you know, some of us use the gas space and we just keep going and and and, and, and be present in our space, you know, the space that we, we have we're invested in. And 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 I'm you know appreciative of this space and, and hope that you know it continues to you know to host dialogue and, and around some larger issues, some institutions institutional issues as well as the new school but also some larger issues around student you know, student debt. It currently does that through our exhibitions, through Paris the City, through Unfold. We do have discussions about right. relevant topics, climate right. change. So I mean I don't understand why that's not important to keep here. Well well I mean climate change is very important. Sure. Sure sure it is. Sure it is. I'm not saying that what you're doing is not important. I'm just saying that the attention of you know the larger uh, student population, you know, was was gained through you know this action that you know we, we don't necessarily agree with, but it kind of worked. You know, yeah. I'm not sure what your numbers are usually like coming through here. I've never been to this space ever before. So, <clears throat> thank you. I'm just sitting. <laughs> My name's Brendan. I'm a worker here, and I don't know. Hmm? So I can tell you that I walked past this place Saturday, 
and I was mortified. I almost broke down crying because I work here and it's my job to protect the artwork and this gallery right here. Now, I don't see the need for the graffiti and the destruction. We had paint on the windows, the walls. We had words such as bitches on front of our doors. We, it was horrible. And I mean, I understand that you guys all have valid points. But to do it in this way doesn't make sense. I mean, you're destroying a place that is educational. I mean, our gallery is used to educate through art. We have discussions to educate through speakers and artists. It's a great place for people to network and connect in other ways that people usually don't get to. I mean, it's a magical place, and I don't understand how letting students go over this place again, we can be sure that's not going to happen like this again. I have no comfortable. I don't feel safe knowing that students are going to go over this place again. It's just not right. I mean, we saw it happen. You guys all got the pictures. We passed them out of what happened at 95th Avenue. We knew that that was coming here. But there's no guarantee that it's going to be protected. There is nothing. You know, I'm a worker here, and I'm now losing my job because I can't work here in this gallery. You know, I'm losing money. You guys are taking money away from me as well. I understand this. Does anyone have any answers? Is that true? Can somebody actually verify that? Sorry, because are you really going to have... Can somebody... I, I, yes, I, I will ensure that everybody gets paid. We've already, we've already got our... Okay, thank you. Thank you. Just to get that out. Yeah, that is not... So, the you can pay us, but where is the education that we learn while we work here? Where is that taking? You're taking it from us. Hold on, in terms of pay, it does seem to be responsible here. I mean, the people that... If you, lost your, if you lost your job, whose responsibility is that? Well, I'm going to have the staff. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, you're blaming, who are you blaming for the loss of your job? Okay. The occupiers? They came here. They were here for a day or two, and it's an occupy. And they were in clear with the occupation. Why? I get my son, they were Where's here. Where's your boss? Who's your boss? If this is an emergency situation where your safety was threatened, let like you say, it felt like you, you, you were scared, you, you, it wasn't a safe work condition, you you're, you're lost your job, shouldn't your boss provide you with uh, another job? Surely, I mean, there must be plenty of other jobs. You know, well, that documentation promoting the space for people to come, I mean, what's your line of communication with her? So there's chat. Yeah. I would like to stack here for people that want to talk. Big 
big supporters of the opportunity. <coughs> we sit around at our staff meetings and share our feelings today about how much we love it. We love these conversations and we love these dialogues. But at this juncture, we do feel it needs to be said that the movement of this institution to create more student spaces and more student resources has come at the price of our primary space and our resources. And we would love to see this space become a place for dialogue and conversation and organization, but we would like to also see the administration compensate us for the rank that we lost by moving and the space that we no longer can use and the tools that we no longer have because they are in two different buildings on this campus and a warehouse in Redhook. And the same would probably, in you know, support of the gallery staff who at Hill are doing the same way, we would like to see them compensate. <coughs> that will be addressed here is whether or not this space is going to continue to be for the use of what the occupiers were intending or if there will be another space opened and what exactly the intention is that they really want to use it. So um, we're, we are very concerned about you know, the livelihood of the workers um, in the gallery as well definitely as Sonia and Azar. Um, but it's not definite that this space is going to be lost. So just so everyone is aware of that. Hello, I'm Ted, and I'm a master's student in philosophy at the NSSR. I did take place in the occupation, and I mean, I don't know how, how to call it, but uh, it's something that we need to learn a lot from. The space at Kellen is never going, was never to be an occupation. This was a public space for student organizing. And so I don't understand how anybody had even the inkling of a right to you know, write on the walls. That's said. The student movement is maybe one of the most important things that I can imagine myself participating in right now. <coughs> Across New York City, we're seeing a uh, revitalization of politics, of what it means to be a citizen, what it means to be a student. And we need a space if we're going to make anything happen. If this is going to be a temporary thing, then hold on to that. You know, if you don't like it, it's over in a month. We'll find another space. But for now, we don't have a choice because we're going to make something happen. That's all. Uh, my name is Ashley. I'm in GPIA. For those of you who haven't seen me speak either at the GA or the public forum, um, and I'm just really happy that everybody's here to talk. And I guess one of my concerns about um, the painting over the space yesterday was that we couldn't all come together during the week after the break was over and do it with one another and really try to use this as an impetus for us to continue a student movement and strengthen it because I know a lot of people weren't necessarily at the GAs but I realized that a lot of people didn't feel comfortable so I think it is really really important for us to have a space not only now until the 21st whether it's here or somewhere else but to make sure that we do demand that we have a space, not by graffiti, but by working together and by making our voice heard, and by speaking up, please participate, participate, participate. So I think that a big point, um, these clearly aren't like an all-inclusive list, but I think that there needs to be mutual respect. I think that there is going to be a little bit of self-sacrifice. I think that it's going to be trying, and I think that we're all going to have to cooperate. And I'm sorry if I sound like a hopeless idealist, but I really think that it can happen. And I hope that through this experience, through everybody, you know, seeing things that they do like and that they don't like, that it makes everybody want to like be a part of this huge movement that's going on all across the country and all around the world. And it should be happening here. We're a radical university. We're known for that. It doesn't have to happen with graffiti. But it has to happen with our voice and with our energy and our commitment. And I hope that everybody is just as committed to the movement and being a part of it as you are to being here right now to air your grievances. So, thank you. Hi, my name is 
Lana. I'm a student at Lang and I was involved in the application for the first few days. And <coughs> where I really like to see this conversation go is how was the occupation or the use of the space actually addressing economic and social and environmental injustice, which is I think why at least I went there. Um, and from the first day, I started trying to have conversations with people about what brought you here, what are we trying to get out of this, is it something that we're looking for change within the school, within the city, within the broader world. Um, and I was pretty disturbed by how difficult it was to have those conversations and how easy it was to like find a beer and hang out with people. Um, and that's not an option. <coughs> this is work and it's serious and it's very important. And I think that if we need to move forward with the space, we need to figure out what exactly we're trying to do. Um, I think we have an incredible opportunity here. I was just at McGill University, and they had an occupation where they went into the administration building. It would last an hour. The administration sent in riot cops who pepper sprayed the students. We have this incredible opportunity where our president is willing to give us a space to work with. And Granted, this is by no means an occupation if it's a gift of space, but since we have an administration who's willing to work with us to some extent, I think we need to figure out how we can move on the like, rhetoric of being all radical to how we can use that gift to actually create change. If it's a system of we're feeling like the administration isn't listening to us, that's different and that's a call for an occupation. But so far, I haven't heard anything along those lines that we feel like we can't somehow take first steps towards working to really change by dialogue, and maybe it needs to get more radical, and I'm all for that, but I want to know what we're doing. Woo! But I was happy that there was a space being offered where students could be safe. We worked really hard over two days to make the space safe for everyone. And then a few people took advantage of that and kind of ruined it for everybody. I know the big question is how everyone's moving forward now. But I'd like you all to think about how it would feel if in your space people came in and disrespected it that way. I'm not blaming the entire occupation by any means. I know it was a small group. But there's something that doesn't sit right. If you had people over in your house, and a few people came and treated it that way, you would be <coughs> a bit angry and a bit upset, to say the least. I also feel like the space is becoming a way a bit loaded now with all that's happened here. And I'm not sure that it's actually the best place for an honest conversation to happen. And finishing up, I'd like people to think about Students were mad that their study space was taken away from them. I applaud that, you know, I understand. But we who run these galleries have at the same time had a lot of programs and a lot of things be displaced. I'm working my butt off to try to find other venues for our programming that we have this week. We have multiple partners that are international partners that we've had to write and say, sorry, we had to take down the exhibition. Um, but, you know, it's an issue and we're potentially breaking contract with people. It's much more complicated. It's not like this was a space that wasn't being used. It's a space that's used all of the time to educate people from the school, from the public, to bring other people into dialogue, <coughs> and now we won't get to do that for the remainder of the semester, whichever way it goes. So it's been a huge disruption to what we do in our livelihoods and what our mission is as the Shirley Johnson Design Center. understand better. Did you say that it's already all the things are canceled for the rest they're of the They're not canceled. I have to but find other places. Hold, all Until that. we know what's happening with this space, it's all up in the air. Okay. So I now have to host an event tomorrow night that's supposed to be in here, potentially in the lobby of 72 Fifth Avenue, which is not a space for a program. So it's, you know, it's a bigger question of what this space is supposed to be and by giving it over to the student occupiers, we were hoping it would be a space of discussion and education, and that it could be something really great, and then that 
was taken advantage of, or was, <coughs> you know, unfortunately now it turned into something totally different. Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, my name is Michael, and I'm a Milano student. Uh, I, I think it's important for <coughs> people who were somewhat involved in the uh, occupation, but not in the destruction, which was a very, very small group of people to acknowledge uh, the kind of a psychological damage that was done to the people who gave us the space and among the, I don't know which this one, but, um, who was just speaking. Uh, I personally was very angry when I walked by here Friday morning and saw this, despite the fact that I had participated or been in and out of the, the occupation trying to figure out how best to move it forward. Uh, and for those of you who aren't really familiar with the details of it, just know that what was done to this space on Friday, in, in my view, really was not a political act. So please don't conflate uh, the, the act of some, I would say, maybe petulant um, and whatever else you want to add to that. Um, <laughs> People who didn't get what they wanted. I mean, the General <coughs> Assembly, the occupation, which was the General Assembly, voted overwhelmingly to vacate that space and move over here. Now, if people wanted to stay behind, that wasn't what the General Assembly had decided. And it was among that small group of people, maybe five, maybe six, maybe seven, I don't know, who came in and did what they did. They did what they did because they didn't get what they wanted. And, it, and because they didn't get what they wanted, they wanted to make sure that none of the rest of us did. So if we, as, 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 um, as compassionate and as bad as I feel for, for the, the people in all the art, which I know is also, a, can be political. I mean, I, I don't know exactly how to reconcile that, but I, I also feel that if we don't do something political here in the next month, that the people who came in to face this, that's exactly what they want. And so, even if we're angry and we're hurt, which I think most of us are to varying degrees, the question is what do we do with that? I mean, do we just wipe our hands, you know, and then not let the door hit us on our way out? Or do we figure out a way that we take that, that anger and that hurt and frustration and turn this something into something that that is different and new and exciting and something that we can do to move this movement forward because uh, as a few people were saying before, there's a lot a, a lot bigger problems that we have to solve here that, that aren't just about the new school and space, but like the rest of the world and melting and all of that. So, um, and this, <coughs> this school it has a history of doing that. So I, I, I just would encourage everyone to be as, um, not give in to the same sort of uh, negative frustrations and those impulses that, that the people across the street or at 90 who came over and did this gave in to when, when they destroyed this place. So. Right, so.
Um, and we should occupy everywhere. And an occupation that should mean um, strategic conversation. How are we actually <coughs> going to change what is going on in the country? How are we actually, how does this look? How does this work? Um, that should be the conversation, not um, let's have a real great movement and uh, I don't know. Let's remember what this is about. that, you know, we have, we had a problem with the defacing of the spaces. I don't think we should be making the distinction between people who were upset and then those student occupiers. We're all more or less upset that the space closed or upset that, you know, somebody's gallery or, or um, people had to make other arrangements. Um, but let's not have the behavior of, maybe I can count them on two of my hands. Let's not have the behavior of those seven or eight people kill all of this. You know, we were beginning to have those discussions about all of the things that we would like to talk about. That was beginning to happen. But because, I'll, I'll say it again, because of all this, you know, it all died. Um, I mean, this more or less is happening perfectly, though, because now we're talking about problems that many of us had throughout the entire occupation. And, you know, yeah, I, we're, 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 it's tragic what happened. Let's not go through the catalog of this and that and that, that, that happened. Let's talk about what we're going to be doing. You know, those of you who want the study space, you know, let's all come together and talk about what we want to do with the new space. Let's not go, get into a tit for tat and why we're upset. I think one of the huge problems, not a problem, one of the things that needed to happen was we needed to have a lot more organizing going in. Because the second that we occupied the building, people were like, yeah, we occupied the building, now let's party. This was very much, you know, this was, people were excited to do this and, and having an occupation, that was it. But for many of us, we wanted to, you know, kind of begin to have a, a, a close knit community at the new school. Anyone could, I mean, if you, if you didn't get upset by the people who were barking at you, and they were barking when people were coming in, but if you got past, you know, many people were in, engaging so nicely, so many friendships made. Ted's like my brother now. And if, not, if it wasn't for that, I would have never met him. You know, if it wasn't, let, let's not let the behavior of these certain individuals, you know, cloud our memories of the really, really good things that happened. And we can, we can take those good things that happened and put it into a new space and have certain ground rules of what can and cannot happen, certain materials that can't be brought in, and have an agenda of, of certain events that are going, going on in space to make sure that those individuals who, I mean, even if you want a graffiti space, they'll come, but no, you won't get a graffiti space and, and vocalize your anger in a different, more responsible way. I mean, all I'm saying is that there are more responsible ways for us to move forward. Let's not let all of this die because of the ground rules. Well, I would like to say that the Student Senate that is our intention. You know, we really want to hear from everyone in this room how, where we can go, how we can start to have these important conversations that aren't happening because we are talking about graffiti. Um, so it, we're at about our first hour mark. Um, there's a couple more people waiting in queue. If I may ask if we could um, make a few short statements, but then I would um, suggest that we open up the dialogue to think about where we're going next and how we can continue these important conversations. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jeremy. I'm a professor. I'm a professor of history, so I tend to you know, sort of take a long view of things. And then just with respect to that long view, like I haven't been as excited about a political movement uh, as I have Occupy Wall Street since the anti-globalization protests of the late 1990s. And then, you know, young people especially, in large numbers, have been asking, you know, serious questions about the inequities of our system and seeking big change because we've learned very bitterly that seeking small change sort of hasn't worked to the satisfaction of millions and millions of people. And then I was immensely proud at how connected the new school seemed to occupy Wall Street. Intellectually, politically, how many warm bodies it provided at odd hours to defend the space. And how many students and faculty and administrators, for that matter, felt you know, personally existentially, ideologically invested in the success of this 
And then I initially sort of read the occupation here through the lens of this larger movement. Zuccotti has been evicted a couple days before. We had a mass student rally, thousands of people in the streets, me among them. And then you see the banners you know, come down the windows, and you see that sort of the space has been taken. And at that moment, it was easy to celebrate this as the seizure of a space for students across campuses to continue the important work of this larger movement and organize and agitate and debate and dialogue, try to create a you know, democratic community, a democratic space, and address in a serious way student issues that go beyond the new school, that frankly are you know, um, national. Um, and then you know, a bunch of things happen that have been discussed here, all very you know, complicated. I still haven't sort of made up my mind. But as a community, I would love us to sort of recommit to what motivated us to join the movement and be so enthusiastic about it. And if we collapse in a torrent of finger pointing, recriminations, a sense of betrayal, and oh my god, this person did what? And we become sort of demoralized and depoliticized, we take ourselves out of this movement and Occupy Wall Street loses you know, a dearly important piece of what has made it so powerful. <coughs> if you think we're winning, think again. I mean, I watched the news over Thanksgiving, and it was 36 hours of coverage about Black Friday and how many people are you know, occupying Walmarts and pepper spraying each other to get the latest <laughs> X-Spot. This orgy of consumption and up to 15% and maybe we'll be safe because Americans are buying more crap they don't need with money that they don't have. You know? And then it's like it's that reality that we want to change. And whether 95th function constructively as a forum for that you know, is debatable. I'm surprised at how much is turning on the walls graffiti. I mean, there might be issues of displacement here. Aesthetics matter, especially for young people. You're all about some level of style and who you are based on, you know, what you project and, and, you know, and so forth. And I wish we could, you know, sort of get past the small issues to look again at, um, you know, the big issues. Hi, um, I'm a student and an adjunct. I'm a student here, and I'm sorry for my transgression speaking out uh, from that area. Um, I, I am also, um, like the gentleman just said, really excited about um, the Walk by Wall Street thing in terms of my students um, seeing, uh, like, them getting for the first time in years, are excited about politics, um, about <coughs> going out um, actively in the streets and, and doing doing stuff, right? Um, and yeah, so I mean, I, I think I've been reading Fred's um, um, blogs and stuff from the new school here about, and I, and I just feel that the kind of uh, the focus on the graffiti, the focus on the few, which I think the president in his uh, letters have stated that this is just a few people. Um, why is that the focus? It seems like it, this is mirroring exactly what we're seeing in uh, the United States, uh, the, the mainstream media, where the focus is on the overt violence, the um, explicit kinds of self-evident forms of uh, uh, babble. Um, how many times do we need to reiterate that, to go over that? <coughs> that, you know, the, you know, the graffiti is, is bad and trash in place. Um, is it eclipsing the larger issue? And then there's this, this aspect that is moving on. Um, what does moving on mean? Okay. Um, is, is it mean papering over? Is that, I mean, did this serve a, a, a purpose? Actually, <coughs> this, you, you just wait for the occupiers to uh, that element within anyone who knows anything about you know protests knows that there's fringe elements just like in any group that will act up. You just wait for them to. Do that, and then you keep them out. Um, and then I'm hearing stories from students uh, about work here. I didn't realize 
I didn't appreciate that about you know, people who work here in the gallery. I mean, we're just so traumatized by this. Um, what troubles me about that is blaming the occupiers. All the occupiers, some of the occupiers. Yes, I know this has been said over and over again, but that's important. Okay? And it's a minority within the occupiers. Um, and I want to go back to my question where I was interrupted. I want to ask you, first of all, you're supposed to be moderators, but you said, I don't know who you are. You're, you're, you're part of the administration. You seem to be. Mediators. You're mediators. We're students. Students. Okay, well, you <laughs> seem to have all the ingredients. I mean, because there's somebody behind a desk. I mean, I can, I can sit. I don't, you don't have to snap at me. I mean, I'm, I'm, sorry. Just, I'm, I'm just trying I'm to question. There's nothing wrong with questioning power. And I respect everyone. I respect these people. Okay? There's nothing wrong, wrong with it. It doesn't have to be a love fest. We're all like, I mean, I love this space. I think everyone should have access to it. I'm with that. You guys aren't now. Okay? I'm just asking some questions. I don't think we're all in agreement. I think we all want to come to a conclusion. That you want to end it forever? No, no, we don't no. want to end it. I think we, we want, want to end the animosity, but we want to continue the message. That these are real issues that have been brought to the table because of the occupation. And instead of alienating some of the student body, the actions of a few, we'd like to engage and make this something that everyone wants to participate in and send a message because we do have that power. We are a radical university that's been said so many times. Okay, when students are saying things like, I lost my job because of the occupiers, now think of that as a headline. Okay. Let's use our but it's not true. Let's not. It's not true that they are losing their jobs. That's what students just told us. It was clarified. It's not true. So let's just go to the next one, so that we don't use up the space. You could be ignorant to what these people are. You could be ignorant to what is being said. Can we listen and actually engage in the conversation? So you seem to have a good eye for trash and for ignorance. My ignorance? Yes, because you're not listening to what's already been said. Can we discuss how we're gonna, where we're gonna go with this? Where, where, where we're gonna go next? Does anyone have any suggestions? Yeah. Hi, my name is Sydney Walsh. I'm a faculty member at Parsons and an active member of the Occupy Wall Street movement in the Education and Environment Working Group. The new school has already been hosting the movement. We have had many meetings here. The Nomadic University is a beautiful project that has come out of the work of many of us. And we have a meeting this coming Saturday, which will be on campus, and you're all welcome to join us. I have um, two reasons why I don't think Kellen Gallery should continue to be the space to have these conversations. The first and most important is that I cannot think of a more public, active space on campus. And I would hope that precisely as part of the movement, we want to ensure that our, our universities are not insular, that they don't just educate the privileged, but that they have public interfaces that welcome anybody off of the street. And that is precisely what this gallery in its recent years has become. If you have not been participating in the pub public programs here, I certainly encourage you, but I think that we should respect our colleagues who have already set up a wide variety of activities, give them back the space so that they continue to have them, even though there's no artwork on the walls. And maybe some way that could be put up, or projections, or whatever it may be, but we could help them rethink um, how can we have the exhibition all the way through the semester. The second reason um, is because I think that students should have uh, not necessarily just a temporary space through December 21st, because I think we're complaining three issues. One was what to do with the occupation. Second was, our students need a space to organize. And the third, which is coming up today, the new school should be hosting uh, conversations around the movement. I think there are many different spaces. I don't see why it has to be a permanent space. And I would love to see Callan Gallery continue to be a gallery. The last thing I'll say is, I'm concerned as a professor of art and design that giving the gallery, that the gallery became the space that can immediately be turned over as a blank room to give to occupiers, continues to create a hierarchy in academia where art and design is not as respected as other spaces. Why do you Um, although my mind may have just been slightly changed by some 
idea. Um, but uh, one of which was that I think that precisely because there is great public value, the kinds of conversations I believe our students can lead and are wanting to lead, that if not this space and other publicly accessible space makes a lot of sense for having those conversations. I also think that much of what I've heard from um, everything from the radio station that was able to set up a studio space in here, which I saw used quite a bit during this show, to the work of the people um, both on faculty and also student workers um, in and, and administration in this gallery. Um, those people, at least the ones I know and have working relationships with, are also deeply invested in public conversation and in education that, are, that is not necessarily only ever rooted in um, being able to pay for that education in a very specific way, right? So I think that there's something that is already happening in this space um, that, that I imagine, regardless of what happens in the next three weeks, that many of the people in the room who might imagine sort of different uses of the space could actually get together and make a really good plan for what would happen in these next three weeks. It doesn't isolate or isolate any one of them, and perhaps finds a way to actually build on what people are already interested in a number of ways, and also build in this kind of mutual sense of accountability that I think is what you're trying to get at, which is, unless you're gonna have postcards at the door, you can't necessarily guarantee all the time that nobody's gonna bring anything in. On the other hand, creating a heavily policed space in which to talk about not is a serious problem. Mm -hmm. We can't do that. Right? So, I think one of the things that I would consider is the extent to which students in particular, and I feel awkward saying this as a faculty member, but the extent to which students in particular are interested in creating a space that they can also sort of protect. Um, I, I believe that our students have fantastic capacities to do that without the police and even to do it just in partnership even with our sort of regular everyday security or maybe in addition to or separate from them, right? So that's something that I would really encourage just to think about if there's a way that we want to have this kind of space that might feel safer to some people. I don't think any space ever feels safe to anyone. I mean, to everyone. Maybe the other is true too. The other thing that I wanted to say really quickly just to try to stretch us out from here is that I read yesterday a statistic that I was, um, alarmed and also not at all alarmed by that I want to share back here, which is that over the course of the Occupy movement across the country, um, the number of people who've been arrested, roughly 4,500 uh, 4, people uh, in the many weeks that this has been going on, blow-ups happening here and in Oakland and all kinds of places, is the same number of people who are stopped by stop and frisk police being in three days in New York City. Three days. And so one of the reasons that I want to say that is to keep in perspective what this idea of a movement movement's about. And I forget the person who brought it up, but there was someone much taller than me who was standing up here before, I think it might have been you, talking about trying to remember why it is that we, we, any of us, are invested in political movement of any kind to begin with. Um, and so one of the points I want to make is that the other thing that I heard a lot of is that some of the tensions that rose up around what kind of politics is the politics of this occupation of Occupy Wall Street, but in particular here, is one of the politics of race and class and gender and sexuality that we are or are not talking about at the new school as it is. And that's the other thing that I really, really want to is that I feel like if we have an excuse right now to create that space, and if there are students who are willing to do that, and faculty who are willing to help support, and I think that is our role to support, I will be 100% behind that. I don't care what room it happens in, but I do think that it's important that people not feel displaced so that that conversation can happen. But if that's what this allows, even as difficult as it's been for people, I think that that is actually an, an outrageously good step forward and one that we need to take. So thank you. short, Shana said a lot of what I also uh, believe. Quickly, I mean, I'm excited about this movement for many reasons. Um, one, because so many people from so many different walks of life have come to be able to publicly express the gross inequalities in the society that many of us have experienced for many years and talk about how this is systemic and how we want to address these actual systems <laughs> through our daily lives and really change something. Secondly, because there's been a process, i.e. the GA, this <coughs> building, that so many people, multiple people, have been able to engage in in large numbers to make collective decisions about change. The, the fact that many people and a process have come together to shape this movement is amazing. I mean, 
I described to my five-year-old daughter the consensus process and she could get it. I mean, it's something <laughs> universal, right? But what I wanted to say here is that both that we all come as individual citizens from walks of life and that there's one unifying process, those are both fictions. They're productive fictions, meaning we can say, hey, this is working for this moment, let's go with it. But come on, they're fictions, right? We don't come as equal, unique, individual citizens en masse. We all come with different backgrounds, different identities, and to be honest, different associations, right? We're not all just individuals coming to this movement. Some of us have agendas from our institutions, from our organizations, from past social movements. And this is true for every major social movement from the 20th to 21st century. We don't just come as isolated, empty souls, right? So I think in moving forward, we need to look at why we're here. How we differently experience this gross inequality. What associations we bring to this movement. And then secondly, the productive fiction of the consensus process. Where is it working? Where is it not working? How can we make decisions on mass, and where do we need to do it in different ways? So that's that's all I have to say. Thanks. Hi, um, my name is Nancy, and I'm a student here. Um, I just wanted to sort of suggest um, something. You know, when I, I went through to the occupation at 95th, and I wasn't one of the people that stayed here, but I I really did feel unsafe as a woman of color, and I felt like. Um, there were students in that space who, who at one of the GAs had said, you know, we just want to have a place to study too. Why can't we share? And, and they were shot it down. Um, and I think that w when thinking about revolution, a lot of us have got caught up in this, this Occupy movement and, and are thinking that the only way to be revolutionary is to take over a space. Um, we should keep in mind that taking over a space for a lot of people around the world is a negative thing. It's not revolutionary. It's, it's, it's the antithesis of revolution. And so we should think about that. Um, and in saying that, you know, that's not the only way to be radical. Uh, to me, the revolution starts in your mind. Um, and that's for all of us collectively and individually. So how can we move forward and have that revolution start in our mind but still take into consideration the things that our peers here in this space who are part of the community as well are, are saying when they say, we use this all the time. You can't come and take it over. Why can't we share it? That's not something that I've heard um, a lot of people say. You know, how do, we, how do we be inclusive? And true inclusivity is taking into account everybody's opinions and feelings and the way that they want to share the space. So as a suggestion, let's begin talking about that. Whatever space it is, whether it's here or another building or whatever, how do we share it with the rest of the wider community? Thank you. 
for. Do you need to first seek consensus from students that you all want a space, that people are going to use a space, and that they're available to manage a space? Thank you, Sabrina. I think that's a very good question. Yeah. You just do like a vote, show of hands. Sure. What about Wiki figures? So, I mean, is this something that we want? Do we want a space? I mean, is there a group that could fit us in a space for the students? That's what we need to use for these If you guys want to comment on it, like, I had a comment that is related to the, the, the space as a possible solution. Um, I think the only way the occupation could be put in this space is if it were and if it acted like an exhibition. And that means that I think that even the title occupation would have to change. But it really challenges the occupiers or all people that are interested in working with both the ideas and then making that possible with this space um, to make tangible art that can be removed afterwards and it's not right, written on the walls, that it's like it, it would practice as any other e exhibition is in this space. And that would also then have the work study students still able to sit at the front and you still have discussions like you usually do with other exhibitions. Is that a possibility to <coughs> have it act as an exhibition? Um, I'd like to have the curator on that particular point? Yes. I'm the curator of the gallery. Um, I think my students and colleagues have spoken rather more eloquently than I possibly could about what this gallery has meant and how actively it is committed to a public conversation. If the decisions or the conversation out of here is that this is a student space for the 21st, let us not confuse it with what the work of the gallery is. It is not an exhibition space. You may choose to put an exhibition in it. You may choose to use it in a variety of ways. But it is neither curated, managed, nor created by the kinds of things that this space normally is in dialogue with. So I want to be very clear from my standpoint that it is, it is not the Kellum Gallery under normal usage. It may be a temporary student space for the kinds of uses that you might want to make. I guess in reference to that specifically, I think that to me, we, we, we don't just want to kind of like uh, almost ghettoize this movement in its relation to uh, the new school between, like, between now and December 21st. We don't want to like, this is the revolution between now and December 21st, and after that, we don't, we don't think about it, you know what I mean? Because that kind of puts that, um, what's your name again? Right, right, right. Made, made, kind of made it clear for me um, that it's, your separation between like, what the gallery does and what this movement does is kind of separated. I think we not only want to uh, speak outwardly to the, great, to the great New York City to organize and have conversations and invite conversations, we also uh, want to challenge the new school on this like history of being radical. I mean, I've heard the new school is radical. and. Sometimes that's not always obvious. We have to challenge the new school on that history of being radical, on that dedication to critical engagement, and also social justice. So we need to find out ways to uh, kind of if, do both. If I have to move the show out, so there's no other way for us to do it. Sorry, I mean, I just apologize for the sound. Okay. Yeah, my point is that we need to challenge the new school and hold it accountable for these for these for this mission statement that obviously, that sometimes we don't is not necessarily uh, as clear to people. Social justice, critical engagement, and this history of being radical. Um, I think we need to work with the institution to maneuver uh, the liberation of space to facilitate conversations, action, and education on on, on perpetual ways. Um, and if you, I have ideas around that. If you want to contact me after this meeting, uh, that's fine. I'm, I'm also a part of the Students of the African Diaspora, which is a social justice organization on this campus that's been working with Rena Katz, who's here. She, she's a student at Parsons, and she has a, a, a project called the New Division, and it's specifically using art for social justice. Because I think something like a gallery is not as powerful to people or, uh, or, as moving as something like, as an occupation because galleries and art has a history of being elitist and not necessarily art uh, that is that facilitates actions. You know, maybe just conversations you come in and you leave. And who yeah, who has been who historically has, has access 
to the culture capital of art necessarily. Um, but I do so I do agree that with what you said earlier around the point that people need to pay attention to what's already going on at the institution. I just think both of those things need to come together, and I just don't want to like leave like us the crisis after the 21st after next semester not think not think about any of this. I don't want us just to be complicit. I think that's. One of the things that the occupiers can agree on, like we just don't want to like go home and just like continue our routine. You know, we want to challenge the university. I think we should be somehow create or organize around improving the university and these programs that already go on. Uh, this nomadic university, honestly, I didn't know what that was. We need to be investigating what the gallery space is being used for, what conversations and actions are coming out of that. So what I'm basically what I'm saying is we need to do both things. Outward conversations, but also challenge the university. And if you have, if you want to work around, uh, work around projects that uh, create like uh, spaces and use the institution to liberate spaces around the university, not just occupy one space. Talk to me. Come to Sprout. Thank you. Oh yeah, I just have a very fast question. Just want to know: Is this uh, student center? Um, corresponding to the principles of all WS or, so, or, or this assembly characterized as something autonomous? Because I don't see anything that is happening at the OWS being replicated here. Um, and so is this seen, I, I want to just ask a question, is this seen as an autonomous thing uh, or is it related to the OWS? No, the students said it. you mean the students said it? Well, the whole thing. I, it, we don't have a leadership position no? with the occupation or Okay, so it's about the new school. Yes. Right. The student senate has existed far before our campus. Okay, but you were treating things of occupation and occupied last year. That's why yeah, it's this is just Yeah, okay. Um, I would do a temperature check. We might be clearing out. Um, I would imagine that maybe this will be ending sooner or later. But I think that um, the space issue really needs to be addressed. And if we could do a temperature check on making a decision about space, could I mean, what are thought like is the temperature check, right? Like, so we want. What's the question? I think a valid question would be Does anyone have suggestions for what other spaces would work? And, I mean, so you speak to that. Can we first determine that a majority of students is interested in having a space? I mean, just. Temperature check. Do you want a space? Do you want a space? But what happens in this space? Any space, any space, any space, space, any space. But will the same thing this is what happen? Just happen. Just, we realized that by providing talent to the occupiers, the intention was obviously not followed through. It would be a detriment to the gallery space currently to continue up having the occupation be based out of here because it's not as widespread as it seemed to be at the first point, and it's ruined a lot of the exhibitions that have happened. We agree that a space. It would be great if one was provided. Continued political discussion is obviously something that the school supports and that we'd like to continue to see. If we move the space, again, having an agreement from the students that a space is needed. If we move the space, what we would like to see is more collaboration between student groups, more collaboration between just individual students themselves, and more people coming you know, to the Senate, not for any control by the Senate, but just for pure coordination help, because we want more students to be engaged with this. We, you know, we don't want these arguments over what the space is worth, this or that, because we want there to be some structure to it, so it's actually serving the purpose. And it needs that structure, which is why an exhibition format might be a possible solution. Um, but, yeah, um, my name is Andrea. I'm an artist and a faculty member at um, Persons Fine Arts. Um, I want to speak, I'm in two minds about this. I want to speak, um, I cannot speak to the history in which this space continuously is pulled out as the first available space, so this, what I'm going to say, has nothing to do with that particularly. Historically, I, I want to just make a point, um, especially to the students who spoke earlier, or maybe particularly you, um, I, I really pray to see how much pride and, and responsibility you take for the gallery, um, and I want to applaud that. But as an artist, um, historically, art has been a site of resistance. Um, it has been a site of political organizing. And I'm sure that is the reason why Radhika and her team so generously made this effort, making the space at all available for this. And I want to applaud that too. That was an incredible effort. Thank you. Um, and I think that 
now what we're faced, okay, there was a there was a graffiti of the wall, I think we just talked enough about that. For me, can we find a space? I think it seems necessary that there is a space to, to be political. I as an artist do think that the a gallery space is a good size space for that because we are there is an openness in what a gallery can serve, you know, even if it is not part of Radica's program. Uh, which I totally respect. It can be culture. I mean, there's a reason why the occupiers sleep at Judson Church right now. You know, it's always the spaces of culture that provide an open space that is not totally determined, that can deal with the messiness of politics. And that's what we're dealing with right here. And that's why I believe as, a, as an educator that this is a very, very productive space that would be fruitful to preserve in one way or another. But I also want to, I know that the climate change exhibition is fantastic, that is not on the wall anymore. Can there be, can there be a dialogue where it is not mutually exclusive? Can the, the students who will, would take over this space create the space as an open space for the times, for example, the programming that is already in place, like there's a panel tomorrow night, I think there are like five or six events even this week. Like, is that at all possible? Like, can there be a product when this is not an antagonism, which I'm seeing kind of unfolding, but it, it becomes an active, kind of res respectful acknowledgement of the uh, historical use of the space, the possible use of this space as an active political space of organizing, even though it is also a political space of art when it happens. So that, I think, is not something we can solve today by like a vote, which I think might not be fair to the students who are in class, the faculty members who are teaching, you know, so I don't know, maybe we can find a, a time, a moment when there can be a vote, if there needs to be a vote, um, that we vote. Thank you.
to contact other people, how to build um, corporations. So I think it's very easy to do that and it can be done very fast. So yeah, to sum up, let's do this other um, temperature check or mode and then try to provide those forums, organization platforms for those who want to work in this space. And that, this, what the space is going to be, what the plan for this is going to be, can be decided after those people came to get. So, a temperature check. There's a very small, probably not very positive group left. Um, do we feel comfortable making a decision about the physical space right now? No. Okay. Um, so, may I ask, can we have suggestions on how to move forward? <laughs> so many. Melissa, <laughs> Melissa, there are a bunch of people over here, too, who have been waiting maybe to offer some suggestions. I'm just saying you have a queue of people who have that on their mind. Because zero credits, zero credits can create a course for Kelly Gallery, and everyone signs up for Occupy Kelly Gallery as that their course for next semester, or you sign up for the course of a different semester. Zero credit course, you can only register, there's one, one chance, it's done. So using that platform is about two
what we're trying to towards next steps. Um, so, how many of the students here have been to, I think now it's just the boardroom on the seventh floor of 66 West 12th Street with all the Diego Rivera next two weeks to really do something creative and 
and positive and powerful. You have it. You've been given this generous gift. Use it. Please. because ours is, it's five walls that we literally ripped down and we don't have a place to put that. It could be a classroom. Thank you, Carl, for that. Given yes. that none of the occupiers have come in to try and reclaim the space here, uh, yeah, that question would go to the I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> there are the occupiers of these space can be returned to its exhibition use as well as WSR. And if not, can WSR be assigned a classroom anywhere? I have all of the contact information short of the home address of our program director, and I would love to give it to you, to you to give it to your secretary so that that can happen. And what I have to talk about, I'd love to discuss this with the USS. Can we say that you can just get the change to that? Yes. If you feel we can, if you as a group feel we can, then, then you know, we'll give it a try. Uh, yes, and we have all of the walls. We don't even need to like reconstruct the space here. We just need a classroom where we can keep an M box. Well, I don't think it's going to be an exhibition on here. Who's right here? Veronica's right here. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I Sorry, I didn't. I, I mean, if you, if you can accommodate it, I, I think we'd be fine. Accommodate what? The radio station. The radio station had a home here yeah. where the gallery, depending on the decision, I'm delighted to have them back. It appears, <laughs> it appears that we are sitting in an empty room because we emptied this room. This room did not look like this. Sylvia's eloquent comment about Orozco and the richness of that space, that's what this space would have looked like. So the fact that it's empty for this conversation to take place, I think, you know, precipitates certain kinds of discussion about what happens or doesn't happen here. And so I do want to make that clear, that this whiteness of the space and the fact that it looks gallery-like is not what this gallery normally looks like. I'm a master's student a lot. I like to say that I'm really just, I have a problem with us making a decision <laughs> when there's not, a, there's not a majority of our students. I have a problem with us making a decision with faculty, staff members, when there was a movement about autonomy, about student autonomy. I had a problem with that, and I wasn't even at the top of my um, I would suggest that we use some of the other formats to us to actually make a real decision, like that nice blue and black one that we invested in, and do a blue form, and do electronically, so that we can study and actually engage um, in a more meaningful way. Um, also, I'd like to say, that um, I, I don't 
don't want to displace anyone in Allen. Um, I'm one of the people that voted for it to be moved from 90 to 90 that over to Allen. Um, those were our options. Um, I would really like to see the university make a sincere effort to find a home for a very broad, citywide, political, student activism kind of movement that was kind of growing over at 95th. I know that we have such limited space, such limited space. <laughs>
this, this back for what it was offered. Can you then put up art, and then we can clear out while your events are, are already scheduled? Is there, is there a way to do that? I like the short sure. regulations where the accountability would come from, if that were the case. Yes. I, I'm completely aligned <laughs> and completely total support of the positivity that's coming from it. But as I asked from the beginning, there is no accountability, therefore no conversation that can happen as to why it happened and how to prevent it from happening again in the future. So say we do have a program here, and the occupiers start like you know going crazy and graffiti on the walls. Not saying that 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 that's what will inevitably happen, but it is in a sense what did happen. It was a fraction of the people, yes, but none of them spoke up and said why they did it. None of them are here right now. I don't know if they're in class. I don't know if they're like making other political action somewhere else. But they're not here to speak for themselves. Therefore, how how can we prevent this from happening happening again if we do share this? See, it's very difficult for me to say I'm going to act as a kind of manager for a student space. That is a very difficult thing to say and do. So it's, the either or is not to be ornery. The either or is because there are some very complicated issues that come with, uh, and the decision to, on, in, under very difficult circumstances, to say, let's bring down the it's partly to say the art needs to go, it can't be, and to say the space is going to be. So those governance issues still, still stand. Um, the Student Senate would like to propose that we will send out an email within the next few hours that has a vote to the general public. For those of you in the room who know about it, tell everyone to check their email and to vote by the end of today. And we'll ask these questions. Um, as this meeting adjourns, let's use whomever wants to to help us um, draft what we will send to the public. I think question number one is, do we want to space as students? That will be the first question of the board. It might be no, and then everything else becomes null and void. But I don't if we're going to speak on behalf of the students, let's at this point the best I have to offer. And I think that we're ready to, you know, we're, people are going to be disengaging with them. So we're going to have to be support. I would just ask you, I'm going to test myself on the faculty number of questions. I would ask that you be very careful in how you word that because mm -hmm. I think there was a misunderstanding at the heart of this meeting that this might be a permanent meeting and it could not have been. No matter how many students, the nine thousand students, the university will not be operating according to the principles of our democracy. <coughs> Send that out as a temperature check to sort of try to, and really frame it as a way of trying to sort of figure out where the will and where the interest lies. But please, please, the way that you were make sure not to set up any any, any false or unreasonable expectations. Do you think that that? Yeah, you want to send it? Okay, I'm okay, I'll stand up. I, I, all I'm doing is asking them to be very careful how they word it because the, 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 quite the questions that they're asking a vote suggests that it's a conclusion that it's terminated and it cannot be. So really it's, it's depending upon how it's framed and how it's worded, it, it could indicate the, the interest, you know, the sort of interest and will of the student body. But it also could become quite destructive if it was framed in such a way that it led to a reasonable expectation which then could not be fulfilled. I think we hoped for a, some sort of decision during this meeting. It's just a lack of turnout by the operators themselves. Sort of, it's, it's hard to make a one-sided decision when we don't have the people who began this discussion in the first place. Um, we can go on forever, but I'm going to say that it's, it's now the two-hour mark. So if anyone has any outstanding comments, please come up to us. We'll be here. But thank you all for coming. And for